So I tried to switch to the new M1 Max and I failed. Let me tell you the story. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you'll like, subscribe if you want Apple style videos, if you want audio style videos. That's what we got here. So please hit that button, subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends, you know, all that good stuff. And also follow me on Twitter, Jason T. Lewis, P H T, all one thing. Follow me on Twitter at that address. And uh, yeah, you can see what I complain about every single day. Now, this is not a lesson that I feel like I needed to learn. Maybe it's not a lesson. Maybe I needed to learn it again. But this is a video for all the people out there who uh, might experience some FOMO when the new Apple products are released. And, you know, maybe we just pump the brakes for a second. So I've got here the M1 Mac Mini. This one is a one terabyte drive and 16 gigabytes of storage. I got that with the uh, interest in potentially replacing my 15-inch MacBook Pro from 2019. And uh, well, we'll get to that. First, let's let let's start at the beginning. When the new Macs were introduced and they showed off all the things that they could do and how fast they could do them, I was, of course, like, whoa, that's crazy. They, they, that can't be possible. I have to see it for myself. So as soon as the uh, presentation was over and they said you could order them, I just went and I ordered two. I ordered the MacBook Pro 13 inch, uh, just a base model with eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. And I ordered this Mac mini that I just showed you. And uh, I was excited. I was excited. The MacBook Pro was coming soon. The Mac mini took a couple of extra weeks, but uh, in the end, I got them both and I learned a few things. When, when the MacBook Pro came in, I did some benchmarks. I did some real world stuff. I compared and contrasted the performance of my MacBook Pro 15 inch to the 13 inch. And all of the things that Apple said were true. It was incredibly fast. It was incredibly uh, snappy. All those, all those words that people use. It was all of those things. And I was looking forward to hopefully a, a long relationship with this machine. However, this is what happened next. I found for basic computing, you know, if you're using Apple's uh, programs or if you're just using a web browser and maybe an email program or some, you know, PowerPoint or something like that, you would be absolutely fine getting any of these machines. They would last you forever and you would never want for anything in terms of performance. In fact, Apple has almost crossed over that uncanny valley of like you being connected viscerally to your computer. You know, you, you you think something and the computer does it, you know, it's just, that's how fast it is. It's really impressive. Here's the thing. And since I knew that I was going to buy these computers to talk about on the channel, I knew this in the back of my mind, but part of me was obviously hoping that it wouldn't be the case. Now I use my computers every day to do the work that I do. I, I run a YouTube channel and I need for every, I need the camera to work. I need the computer to do what it needs to do. All that kind of stuff. I was, feeling a little optimistic because Final Cut Pro has been transitioned over right away to the M1 system and Big Sur. I was excited because Logic Pro 10 had also been ported over and I was hoping that that would be something that would I, I could use. I've used Logic for years, but the general wisdom whenever a new operating system or, or a, new com a new version of a computer is released, and this is doubly true for these M1 Macs, the conventional wisdom is you just don't upgrade. Uh, I didn't upgrade to OS Catalina until like a few months ago because I wanted to make sure that all of my audio gear and all of my video stuff and all the programs that I use, that they were all ready to go when I upgraded to the new operating system. I have experienced over the years just a lot of frustration. And I don't know, part of me was thinking like, oh yeah, I mean, it's not going to be that bad this time. How can it be that bad? But Apple said all the, these things are working. So yeah, let's, let's go. But a couple of days in, as I got all my programs downloaded and I started to get everything set up so I could do my regular work at the regular time and all that kind of thing, the uh, reality of the situation started to make itself known. The first real big hiccup that I ran into is I use uh, Universal Audio interfaces. Uh, they're a company that makes interfaces. And the thing about their interfaces is they have chips inside of the interfaces that do digital signal processing that you don't have to get done on your on your machine. So you can use the, the plugins that come along with their 
gear and not have to overtax your system. I also have a universal audio satellite that has a few more of those chips in there so that I can use as many universal audio plugins as I want. Typically, I would go to the company's website to see where they were in terms of compatibility with the new operating system or the new hardware, or in this case, both. And I didn't do any of that. I just decided to like rip the Band-Aid off and get these computers and see what happened. Again, as I figured that this is something that I do on the channel and the channel is where I make my money, this experiment would be beneficial to the channel and potentially beneficial to me. But when it came down to it, Universal Audio doesn't support Big Sur or M1 just yet. And there's no real timeline for when that's gonna happen. And not only do I do the YouTube stuff, but I also do a lot of music stuff. I've been a musician for many, many years. And Universal Audio, is that, that interface is the hub of my whole system. So there, there was a problem. It said right on the website that they didn't support Big Sur or M1 Max at all yet. But I had been running Big Sur on my 15-inch MacBook Pro that was still running uh, an Intel chip, so I thought, well, maybe it'll still work. I went to download the software, and uh, I just got this window that said, no. No, you can't use this here. Uh, check back later. So that was a big chunk of what I use for my music production just kind of out the window. Not only is it the hardware, but it's also the plugins that I have that I use all the time, as well as their new uh, recording program, Luna, which I had been sort of fooling around with and trying to, trying to use on a more regular basis over the past few months. So I was out an interface, software, and, and a recording program which basically just threw everything out the window. Logic, I thought, well, maybe Logic will work. And I had another interface, I, I used two interfaces tied together. So I have another interface, I just, I plugged that in. Logic was still a little bit buggy. I found that it was better when you used it in Rosetta mode, uh, when you when you had it translate itself over to uh, the Intel x86 version of Logic as opposed to trying to use it in the M1 section. Same thing with Final Cut Pro, which I used to edit all of my videos. Uh, it worked, and it did all the stuff that it needed to do, but there were times when it would just get a little weird. It would slow down, there would be some beach balls, it just would stop for a while. I did... I don't know what was wrong. I've had projects that have run very smoothly using the M1 Max and uh, and Final Cut, and then I've had some that have just been like, tear your hair out, kind of the why isn't this working situation. So I, I tried for a couple of weeks to get all this stuff ironed out, and it just, I was losing more time than I was using. So if you're losing more time than you're using, things probably aren't quite ready for prime time. So what did I do? What did I do? I got return labels for both of the machines. I am very excited about this new architecture. I'm very excited about this new software. I think when it matures, it's gonna be amazing and my productivity will shoot through the window as it will for a lot of other people. But right now, and most likely for the next six months to a year, everything that the professional needs to use to get their work done is not gonna work efficiently or effectively or at all in some cases with the new M1 Max. They are an astounding achievement, but they are not ready for professional work. So I got those return labels. I've got this guy right here. Uh, it's going to be going back to Apple. I thought, well, I, I can just go back to my 15 inch MacBook Pro, but, but, there, but there were issues with that as well. Only has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which at first wasn't really a problem, but as my projects got bigger and my codecs got larger and all this other stuff with the video stuff, I really felt like I needed more and it wasn't quite filling the bill. So that's why I got these machines in the first place. Maybe they're an option. I did something that I didn't expect that I would do but if you look back over my right shoulder here, you'll see in the background a 27 inch iMac. I went out last Friday in a fit of frustration. I actually drove to a Best Buy that was like an hour and a half away and bought a $2,000 version of the 27 inch iMac from 2020. I had looked at the benchmarks, I'd look at the real world stuff that's available on YouTube and other places. And I just decided like, hey, okay, this is this performs faster than 
or as fast as any of the computers that I have right now. And it's an i5 chip. But the big selling point for me, at least right now in the interim between when the M1 Max become ready for prime time. So specs wise, besides having an i5 chip and the 5300 lower end graphics card from AMD, even though those are lower end parts, they are faster than the higher end parts from even just a year ago. But there's also the ability to upgrade this machine to up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. And I just happen to have 64 gigabytes of laptop RAM hanging around. So I just <laughs> I just decided to take that and put it in. Now here's here's something that is not well known. You know, there are some great companies like OWC and other places that sell Mac specific RAM. Uh, and they charge a little bit of a premium for it. But the truth of the matter is these Macs will use laptop RAM. As long as they're the spec that you need for the iMac, you can use general old laptop RAM if you have any laying around. So I had 64 gigabytes and it took the RAM just fine. And now I am flying along doing the things that I need to do. All in all, this is kind of a stopgap measure. But the important thing here, for any of you who are out there who are doing professional things, whether as a profession or just as a hobby, the important thing that I want to impart with this video is that it's really tempting and really fun to try out the new tech. But the important aspect that you have to remember is you always have to have a computer in the background that can work for you if the new thing doesn't. That's why I kept my my 15-inch MacBook Pro set up just the way that it had been so that when I needed to, if I needed to, I could jump onto, onto that and finish projects. And that happened several times over the first couple of weeks that I had the M1 Max. So now I have this Intel i5 iMac, which came loaded with Catalina instead of Big Sur, which the newer machines come loaded with Big Sur. So it had Catalina. All my stuff is compatible with Catalina. And so I just got back up and running with a little bit more machine than I had previously. Not everybody's going to be able to you know, keep back their old machine until they test out the new computer that they bought. And in a lot of cases, that would be cost prohibitive. You got to free up that money in order to buy the new computer. But if you're in that situation and you're thinking about getting an M1 Mac, I want to reiterate that you should go to every website for every program, every piece of hardware, everything that you use and have to have. Go to every website, make a list for yourself or, or whatever. Just go through your programs, whatever you need to do. Go through and make sure that when you make that switch, the stuff that you need to have is going to be ready to go and there's not been any significant problems with them for a bit of time. I know that means you're going to have to hold off succumbing to FOMO, but it's for the best. There's nothing more frustrating than being in your flow state, doing your work, getting your stuff done, and then the tool that you're using just decides it doesn't want to do that work. And then you have to spend a lot more time figuring out why and how and Anyway, I love the new M1 Max. I am anxiously anticipating when they mature to the point where they're good to use for people with professional applications for them. But right now, if you do light computing, if you just sort of use your computer for business, but you don't have to really use your computer to create your work, then you're probably in good shape. However, like I said, if the computer is integral to you producing your work, it's uh, best to wait for right now. Uh, tell me what experiences you've had out there. Have you had good experiences with the M1 Max? Are you waiting like I should have for the M1 Max? Are you just going to dive into it and see where it takes you? Let's talk about the, the usage of the M1 Max here in these early days down in the comments below. Once again, I thank you so much for being here. If you want to come back, like, subscribe, bell notify yourself, all that kind of stuff. Share these videos out if you want to. We've got merchandise for sale down below this video. We've got a membership program that gets you all kinds of cool stuff. And I do encourage you to follow me over on the Twitter. That's where I am most of the time when I'm not making videos. And we can, we can chat. We can post funny memes to each other and that kind of stuff. At any rate, once again, my name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech. So honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.